Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog, and while iPadOS may seem like a subtle change or just a nominal change to the iPad, it actually fundamentally changes how you use the iPad, the multitasking experience, and how much work you can get done with this tablet. Let's go ahead and dive into my favorite 30 or so features and changes of iPadOS, and make sure you also check out the top 50 changes to iOS 13 linked in the description down below. So first I want to get started with multitasking because this is one of my favorite features of the software update. So now you can actually open up the same application side by side. Of course you had split screen and split tabs and Safari before, but this is essentially that, but for the full app for a lot more apps, any app that chooses to support this. So for instance I have a note open, but I can grab notes and pick it up and open it right next to it. Now I have two notes that I can edit and work on side by side. I can drag and drop things between them. So if I have this selected, I can drag it over here. You can see just like that, it's awesome. Now there's also a new feature called Exposés, and this simply allows you to have multiple different setups, basically different desktops for your applications. If I click on Notes again, you can see I have two different Notes Exposés here, uh, one a note by itself, one split screen with Safari, and I can do basically unlimited of these, and I can add another one over in the corner, um, and you can see that I have that there. So this is an awesome feature that enables you to have basically multiple desktops with the same app and this really opens up doors in creativity. And finally in multitasking you have a new and improved slide over. So I can pull up an application for the slide over and I can choose that and I can drag over another one to replace it on top and I can choose which one I want. But I'm not just limited to this one so once it is open and I can show you that you can actually swipe up. It basically gives you an iPhone 10 style uh, multitasking that I can switch between what app I want and I can cycle through them just like on the iPhone 10 just by swiping at the bottom and that's awesome. Basically an iPhone 10 that just lives on the side of your iPad if you want that. That's great. Now your home screen. So for the first time you can actually add uh, a lot more apps to your home screen. So if you go into the display and brightness settings you can actually choose to have more apps and you can see you get a ton of apps on your home screen or you can choose to have it bigger which I like because it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference um, for your apps and so my apps are just bigger and I like this and that's different that you can now have uh, a lot more apps on your home screen. But what you can also do is basically have your today view on your home screen. So if you swipe over you can see that you have these widgets pinned to the side. Uh, this is the same as if you were to slide into control center and get your today view but this can just live on the side of your iPad just like that and that's pretty cool. Doesn't change a whole lot of functionality but it is a nice change. It makes you feel like there's more. The Apple Pencil has definitely been improved. Its latency has been more than halved so it's just very responsive even more so than it was in the past so that's great. Now also in the Notes app, there's a new palette. So if you're drawing and you click on the pen option, uh, there's a new palette that you can drag around, collapse, change your tool. You see you can move it wherever you want. Uh, and it's just a really nice tool and you can keep it out of your way, just like that. Now another awesome feature, if you are in Safari or mail or a document or a few different applications you can actually take extended screenshots so when you screenshot and you click on it you can get just your screen and of course you can annotate that and mark it up or just like on the iPhone you can do a full page effect which will basically convert it into a PDF and screenshot the entire page so for instance if I do this on Apple's website and if I do full page you can see it basically turns this into a PDF that I can scroll through and I can annotate to get one long document and that's awesome. Now an even quicker way to do this is with your Apple Pencil drag in from the corner and it instantly lets you annotate that screenshot which is pretty great and you can do the same things there and so you can do that from either corner and that's pretty cool. Now just as with the iPhone, there is a new font option. So if you go into settings in general and you go under fonts, soon you'll be able to install fonts. And this will be great to be able to use with graphic designs uh, to have system fonts for different applications. And this will be really great for creative purposes. 
Of course, dark mode is here. I have a whole video on dark mode, but basically changes the whole look of your device, turns all of Apple's native apps dark. It looks super clean. And you have this set up to turn on automatically when the sun goes down, but it darkens your wallpaper, darkens your dock, turns mail and settings and messages and notes and everything like that uh, into black and white, essentially. Dark mode is incredible on the iPad and looks really, really great, especially at night. Now, another awesome feature is the new text selection features uh, and text editing features. So, for instance, you can double tap a word and it will select that word. You can triple tap to get a sentence and then quadruple tap to get a whole paragraph, and that's really nice. Now, there's also three finger shortcuts. So, pinch to copy, pinch twice to cut, three finger spread to paste, three fingers to the left to undo, three fingers to the right to redo. This is really cool because this can be implemented into other apps. And for instance, something like Notability that I use for taking notes, I can very quickly undo and redo just with these gestures, and that's awesome. You can also do a three finger tap, and it will pull up these shortcuts for you automatically. The keyboard. So if I pull up the keyboard, there's actually now a sweet new floating keyboard, which wasn't even available for the iPad Pros before. So if I do this, you can actually drag it around, which is just incredible. Um, and if you're using this, it basically, again, just turns this into an iPhone 10 keyboard, which includes the quick type. So I can just drag my fingers across and I can type and it is super cool. Uh, and that's a great feature. And then if I want to redock it, I can just bring it down and it redocks. So that is a really cool feature with the keyboard here. And Apple also added a whole bunch of new command uh, and keyboard shortcuts. So if you're using this like I am with my keyboard in Safari and other applications, they've added a lot of new shortcuts to get the most out of your iPad with your keyboard attached. So in files, they added a new view, this column view, which allows you to retrace your steps uh, as you go through your files. And this is a really, really nice view. It makes it very simple to track the process of where you got to where you are. Uh, so that's a nice new view in files, as well as some category separations up top. Now, Apple also gives you the ability to share your folders. So uh, you can have collaborations and share files more easily with other iCloud users, including on the web. Uh, and then there's also the ability to have servers. So if you need to work from home or work from a PC, you can access files on servers using files on iOS 13 and an iPad OS. And finally, if you plug in an external drive like an SSD or a flash drive, you'll now be able to access the contents of that drive, which is incredible for pulling files right off and dragging it into other folders within your files or elsewhere on your iPad. Now, Safari is perhaps the biggest change here. So this is a full desktop browser, which is great. By default, now, it, by default now, your web pages will go to desktop, so you don't have to worry about fiddling around with mobile sites, uh, ideally. And Safari is just so much better with the content that it can load. So if you go to like Google Drive or something like this, it's not going to force you out into their app. Or I can go to like Google Docs, for instance, and access and edit things right from here, which is a huge improvement over Safari on iOS 12. So you now be able to download files right on your iPad. So for instance, if I have a document, so for instance, if I have this document, I can actually download this. So I'll download it as a PDF document. And then it will give me a download prompt. And you can see it does go into the download manager. And from there I can view this as a PDF and I can also download videos and other things. So this is amazing. And then last but certainly not least, there is mouse support. That's right, there's mouse support on this. Not all mice are supported uh, and it's not a fully functioning mouse, but it's almost there. It's like 90% the way there. You can even configure the buttons on your mouse. It's more of an accessibility setting, but it works and I'm using it right now for editing this video on the iPad, which is something that's just really cool to say, but a nice addition regardless of any other limitations it has. So those are my favorite features with iPad OS. Definitely the big ones are here. Mouse support is incredible and will change how you use and interact with the iPad, even if it is a little bit limited. And then you have dark mode, which is also on the iPhone, but is incredible and really beautiful and nice to use at night. Then you have files, which has been improved. You can now use it with external drives for accessing data, which is a big plus. Safari is so much better and now is something that I think people will really want to use for getting things done, such as a Squarespace and other heavier 
sites that you couldn't use before and that would just kick you to mobile apps which is definitely inferior to how safari should be on a device like a tablet uh, and then you have great new multitasking multi-window support and app exposés anyway let me know your favorite feature of ipad os check out our other content covering ipad os and ios 13 and give this video a like and subscribe but thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video